Look to your covenant, O Lord, and forget not the life of your poor ones forever. Arise, O God, and defend your cause, and forget not the cries of those who seek you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And the Mass this morning is being offered for the people of the parish, so remember us yourselves. Uh, those who are joining us on the live link, you're very welcome. Um, and indeed, those unable to come back to Mass for now. Um, but we remember them all in our spiritual communion here. Um, the, uh, thank you for cooperating with the face masks. Uh, the priest does not have to wear a face mask when he's celebrating Mass, apart from communion time, which is the reason why uh, I'm relieved of that particular responsibility. The readings today, wonderful readings about the abiding presence of God, and particularly in that first reading, where the, 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 the presence of God is experienced not in the noise and the earthquake, the wind and the fire, but in the sound of the gentle breeze, in stillness and in silence. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you are the image of the unseen God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the firstborn of all creation. Christ, have mercy. You are the head of the body, the church. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Richard, I've, I've forgotten a sheet of paper which is to do with the Mass intention today.
but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind came an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire there came the sound of a gentle breeze. And when Elijah heard this, he covered his face with his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy and give us your saving help. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. I will hear what the Lord has to say, a voice that speaks of peace. His help is near for those who fear him, and his glory will dwell in our land. Let us see. Your Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. Mercy and faithfulness have met. Justice and peace have embraced. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice look down from heaven. Let, Let us seek, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. The Lord will make us prosper, and our earth shall yield its fruit. Justice shall march before him, and peace shall follow his steps. Let us seek, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. What I want to say is no pretense. I say it in union with Christ. It is the truth. My conscience, in union with the Holy Spirit, assures me of it too. What I want to say is this. My sorrow is so great, my mental anguish so endless, I would willingly be condemned and cut off from Christ if it could help my brothers of Israel. My own flesh and blood, they were adopted as sons. They were given the glory and the covenant. The law and ritual were drawn up for them, and the promises were made to them. They are descended from the patriarchs, and from their flesh and blood came Christ, who is above all. God forever bless. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heavens. Hallelujah. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips. Proclaim his gospel worthily and well, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he would send the crowds away. After sending the crowds away, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone while the boat, by now far out on the lake, was battling with a heavy sea, for there was a headwind. In the fourth watch of the night, he went towards them, walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. 
It is a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But at once Jesus called out to them, saying, Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. It was Peter who answered, Lord, he said, if it is you, tell me to come to you across the water. Come, said Jesus. Then Peter got out of the boat and started walking towards Jesus across the water. But as soon as he felt the force of the wind, he took fright and began to sing. Lord, save me, he cried. Jesus put out his hand at once and held him. Man of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And as soon as they got into the boat, the wind dropped. The men in the boat bowed down before him and said, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, one of the things I've noticed uh, this week with you wearing face masks is how much quieter your responses are when I say the Lord be with you and with your spirit. <laughs> Mind you, it's a lot louder than it was during lockdown when there was nobody here. Um, the gospel today, Jesus says, courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Um, but we are afraid sometimes, aren't we? And is fear always a bad thing? I fear for my own safety and the safety of other people. That's why we're wearing face masks. I drove down the M6 and the M5 the other day, and for fear of getting caught and fined, I stuck to the speed limit most of the time. I'm also a little bit afraid of spiders. In lots of ways, fear is quite a natural thing and sometimes even a good thing. Fear keeps us safe and helps uh, us keep other people safe. When a parent fears, fears for their child, they are protecting them and nurturing them and educating them. If we have no fear, then we might be foolhardy and dangerous. So in this way, fear is no bad thing. But fear can also be a terrible handicap. Fear of danger may mean being paralyzed and never getting anything done. Fear of authority may mean we never speak out against injustice. Fear of suffering may prevent us undergoing essential medical treatment. Fear of the danger in the world around us may mean that we never take a risk never step out of the front door. And parents, if they're not careful, can prevent children from encountering the reality and the knocks of life for fear something worse may happen. This kind of fear is more like cowardice. So Christ calls us neither to be cowardly nor foolhardy. He calls us to trust in him to trust in him, but not too much in ourselves, and not too much in the empty promises of the world around us. And that is what we call courage. Courage is facing the trials of the world with our eyes open, with the, an awareness of the challenges and the dangers, but also a trust in his purposes and his love. In courage, we may have to take risks, face suffering, let go occasionally of those in our care. In courage, we must trust God, not always, place, not always playing safe, but neither putting God to the test. Courage is not about the thunder and lightning and clatter, which we hear about in the first reading, but the gentle breeze the quiet voice with which it ends, the trust in God who is always there with us and for us, even if we think we are sinking beneath the waves.
And if you please stand, we'll say today the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And we've been asked to omit the prayer of the faithful in these weeks, but if we could remember, especially in our prayers, Nicola and Marcus Will Wilkes, who are, I think, in the hall, in the overflow, if you like. So we pray for the Lord's special blessing upon them on this, their 17th wedding anniversary. So we ask the Lord to, to fill you with abundant blessings. Uh, bless you and all your family and all your loved ones. Thank you. If you please be seated, we we'll continue with the liturgy of the Eucharist. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Be praying the fourth Eucharistic prayer today with its own, uh, own preface. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, <coughs> truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, For you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages, 
and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth, our Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so love the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Saviour. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of hearts joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, the gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servants, Francis, our Pope, Mark, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into our heavenly inheritance with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ.
The blood of Christ. O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord, who gives you your fill of finest wheat. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacraments that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And remember, we pray for God's blessing upon us all and upon all those who are dear to us. Remember especially Nicola and Marcus and wish them a very happy wedding anniversary. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat>